simplifying defense. And, and, and the way I look at it is, is um, just having pillars when you go out on defense rather than being like, oh, that guy just, you know, go out there and play defense. And um, sometimes you, you hear the, the, the thought process of, hey, just go out there and stop him, right? Go out there and, and just don't let him score. Um, and and <laughs> true, true, very true. Um, but it's, it's tough. It's tough to think about. And it's tough to coach when that's the mindset of, hey, go out there and, and don't let him score. And, and if the guy's getting beat, then slide. Um, it just kind of jumbles all up into one. So the three pillars that we talk about is just kind of, um, the first one is just cutting the field in half. And when we talk about cutting the field in half, what that means is, is if there's an offensive player on one side of the field, your job as the one-on-one -on -one defender is to take away half the field. So do not let them, when they're on one side of the field, come to the other. Okay? And it's as simple as that. And, and you know, there's a bunch of different things um, that, that are able to be coached when, you know, you ask, do I, how far do you get up on them, coach? Like, when, when do I have to be um, next to them to make that happen? And when I say kids are smart, kids are really smart. So if, you're, if you go up and just say, hey, get up high enough where they can't come across to the middle, um, they'll, they'll understand that, and they'll do it. And sure, it's going to take a couple times, but that's what practice is all about, right? It's just let them feel it out, and then you can coach them, hey, you got to get higher, you got to get higher. It's not, hey, get your top foot, even with that dodger shoulder, to keep them on that side of the field. Because if they're starting to think about where their top foot is compared to their shoulder, we're in yeah. pretty rough shape, right? We're in pretty rough shape for that. Um, so as we start to, so just cut the field in half, that's job number one. And then we talk about job number two. And what, what we've made this kind of, at, at Syracuse, we, we had a, it's, it's called point of contact. Okay, and, and our point of contact, and, and that's something that's unique to every single team. It's actually unique to every single goalie, in my opinion. So what point of contact means is it is that, it is that marker from where you feel your goalie, uh, you're comfortable with your goalie making consistent save. So for some goalies, it may be 12 yards. They're really good, right? Maybe some goalies, it's 15. Um, maybe it's, it's 18 yards because, you know, you got a, you got a beginner at goal. Uh, maybe it's 22, 23 yards, and, and then that goalie probably isn't stopping too many balls, and let's try him out on attack, right? Let's try to – let's, let's, get, let's get him out of the net. Um, but – so you talk about that, and you say you're 15 yards. So if your point of contact is at that 15 yards – so when we talk about that 15 yards, that just means that we have to be in contact with that offensive player, okay? So that's why we call it point of contact, make, make it very simple. So as this offensive guy starts coming down, we have, a, we have a job here. As this offensive player starts coming down, get closer and closer to that 15 yards, this defender's job still can't forget about pillar number one, right? Keeping them to this one side of the field because if this guy was just to run here and try and get in front of them, what's going to happen? probably just going to come back to the middle of the field, right? So with that in mind, it is point of contact just being here. As this player starts to come down, this defensive player has to be in contact with that offensive player at point of contact, hands-on, in contact with them. And I think that's important when we talk about hands-on, meaning on defense, at some point, you're just trying to gain a little bit of control, right? And, and basically, when you square up to an offensive player, and he can go either way, you have zero control as a defender, right? You're not in contact with him. He can take either side of the field, right? So what we did is step one, got a little bit of control because we, we kept him to 50% of the field, okay? And now as we start to drive down, this is the most control at that point of contact. We got our hands on, and then from we have, when we have hands on, we're going to, we call it Velcro, so we're going to stick to them. We're going to Velcro to them, and we're going to drive that player out and away. Okay, so those are the three pillars: cut the field in half, hands on at point of contact, and then drive out and away. We have some new people too, but when you say hands on, where do you tell your players to put their hands on? Like mm -hmm. elbow, hip. Exactly. Uh, so and, and so <laughs> as a, it's a it's a great question, and it's it, to, it has to be at the hip. Okay. It has okay. to be at the hip, and it's when you have hands on, it is because. It's the thought process just like anything else, right? They're the, they're, they're the strongest at their, at their hips and their waist. So we have to be at that hips and waist because so many times, especially in lacrosse, you have a stick in your hand. So when you have hands on and you are up by the shoulder and you're running, that tends to always slide up and, it's, and they're running down. It always slides up into the neck. So to, and it's, it's really hard, but to, to go down here, right? And, and Velcro and get hands on. And, and, and these are the, the different words, right? So cut the field in half, we Velcro to them, stick to them, and drive out and away. I think those three, those 
Velcro and drive are the two biggest words in this whole thing because if you talk to a player, and, and, and I've done this just by, just by calling a random player up, up and, and this is how I coach it when I, when I do players clinics, is I get a player up there that I haven't spoken to, and the first thing I say, okay, step up here and, and push, push, me, push me away, push me back. Right, and they'll walk up to me, and they'll push me, and they'll create distance between the two between the two of us. I said, "All right, good job." Okay, now the next thing, drive me back. And every single time, they drop their hips just like this, put their hands on me, and drive me with their feet back and back and out. Okay, and it's the it's a football mindset, right? They're driving like a lineman, or the, or are they um, pushing me away? Are they pushing me? And as soon as they lose that contact, right, we just lost that control. Okay? So that's what's so important about Velcroing, sticking to that man, and driving away. And that's exactly what happens because when you talk to a player about driving them out in a way, they have to use their hips. That means they drop a little bit and tend to be lower on that, that waist region and, and be able to push them out in a way. Now, for me, when I play, I have to get low when Paul Rabel's dodging on me or he's going to run me the heck over. Right. So, um, you know, those are all the different coaching points that you can do is like as a as a smaller player, um, you know, this is where you're the strongest in your legs and you have to utilize that. Um, you know, so but in terms of the three pillars, when you say you have, OK, cut the field in half, get to them, stick to them, Velcro to them at the waist level and then drive out and away rather than push them away. Um, that that is the difference. The difference between push and drive is a lot in a player because. Even if you just call them up there and ask them to push you or drive you, that's that makes complete. Those are two completely different situations and words for for that player. So that's really really important to kind of um, just help them really get to understand what what we're talking about and what we're trying to do. And and then you start thinking about drive, right? And when you have when you talk about that control as a defender, velcroing and driving them out. Theoretically, if I'm doing my job and I can drive them out this way. I can also drive them out this way, I can also drive them out this way, or I can drive them out this way because I have control. I just gain control on them, on their hips, and I can really drive them wherever I want, right? And then that just puts that, that action into their head as well. Um, and, and so that's the, that's the super important part at that point of contact. Um, and then just to, to touch on quickly, which I think is the hardest thing to coach, is a slide. Right? So coach, when do I slide? How do I know he's beat? When do I slide? If, and we can get into this if you want, but I have a theory um, in terms of just coaching up a, a, a player. It doesn't matter where you're going to slide from. I think you should slide from the crease. It doesn't matter if you're going to slide from over here or over here. I don't really care. Wherever the heck you're sliding from, the job of that slide man is to make a decision. I have a player up here doing his job cutting the field in half. Sure. That gives him a little bit of control, but really what that does is giving our defense the control. Because he's saying, as a player up here, he's saying, hey guys, if I'm going to get beat, I'm going to get beat in this area. right?" So that's what he's telling all five other players behind him, plus the goalie, that I'm going to get beat in this area. And lo and behold, we have our point of contact over here already set in stone, and that is what our slide guy is starting to think about as soon as this dodge happens. So if this dodge happens, and this guy's really fast, maybe the best player, whatever. He's really fast, and, we, and he just left our defender in the dust. How do I make that slide guy make that decision? It's his job to look at that 15 yards and, and make a decision where he thinks his teammate is going to catch up to that offensive player and be in contact, hands-on, be in contact at 15 yards. If he's not in contact at 15 yards, if I don't think he's going to be in contact at 15 yards, that means I have to go. That means I have to be in contact at 15 yards and doing the same thing, Velcroing and driving out and away. Okay? Yep. Another quick thing uh, for some new guys and mm -hmm. myself too. 15 yards, the, uh, the goal is on the five yard line. It's like the 20 yard line in the football field. I know we usually play on football fields in a lot of our schools. Yeah, so 15, so 15 yards from goal line extent. So wherever you feel comfortable in your goalie. Exactly. Like your goalie, so if your goalie like can't. Time, it might be 20 yards, it might be 25, 25 yards. If, if your goalie, and think about this, this is the shot on the run at the high school level. Yeah. So basically, if you, to, to figure this out, is, is if you're putting your goalies through, through a drill, is, is throw a cone out to 20 yards and have them dodge to that cone and shoot at that, and make, okay. and the rule is they have to shoot at that cone. The cone. 
right? And see how is he being consistently making saves at that 20 yards um, away from the net, or is it 25, or is it 15, or is it you know 17, whatever it is? And especially if you're playing on that football field, you know those are you see those you see those uh, those bows, and usually you know usually this line is like right on that hash mark area. That's kind of where we're making that point of contact, that thought process. And then you know once you make that. That's where you're going to go. That's where you're going to slide to. That's where it starts to become instinctual, and that's when your defense becomes really, really good. Okay. Um, so I think that's a, that's a great question. Uh, but, yes, it absolutely matters on where you feel comfortable because as that player, if I'm not there and I'm you know, going to be there at 15 yards and he shoots at 17, you know, okay, maybe that's a good shot that we're giving up. Does that you know what I mean? So that's kind of what we're we're hoping for at this at this juncture. We're being chased as an offensive guy. We're chasing him, and there's a guy coming to his face, and he's got to worry about shooting. That's a lot to worry about um, as an offensive player. So um, that's that's kind of just as we're thinking about that, and that's where that team defense concept comes into play. Is hey, if I don't think my teammate is going to be in contact with this guy, that means I have to slide, and it just makes up. A heart, it's, it's just, hey, this is a decision that it's a tough decision, but make it and we'll work around you. So if this guy makes that decision, that means everyone else has to be on board and, and that's okay. If he, if <clears throat> worst case scenario, he makes the wrong decision, we have two players with hands on at our desired yardage, our point of contact, right? And, and that's not a bad place to be either, right? So, um, you know, that's when you're teaching a slide, is it's okay to. To slide into a double, if you know you make that you make that that wrong decision, could turn into a great decision for you. It's a turnover. Mm -hmm. So the guy that get, gets beat should he actually go in and look around for someone else? Absolutely, and that's a that's another. So that it depends on you know that's a that's a coaching point. So um, you know you can you can do a, a ton of different things at this point. Um, we we always did that exactly that is is if you're coming into this um, and, and you're going to be there, our call was get off, get off, get off. Um, meaning I have the ball, so telling whoever this trailing midfielder is um, to get off and get into the middle of the field and pick up another guy, essentially. Um, and, and that's another coaching point to, hey, listen, we're, we're, a, we're a defense. You may think that you're not beat, but guess what? Your teammate thought you were beat, and, and you have to swallow your pride and not turn like this and say, why are you sliding, right? Palms up, why are you sliding to me? I had them, and just get the heck back in, and we'll catch the next round. You know, and you can talk about that on the sideline. Hey, you know, let's go a little slower. He's doing a really good job on ball. Um, and those are all things that you can pull into. But again, you're coming back to three pillars of things that you have to do rather than talking about, you know, whatever the heck's going on, all of these other things. You have three situations where you say, hey, you know, we can go a little slower to point of contact because, you know, they're, they're dummy dodging. They're not dodging to shoot. They're dodging to pass. Right? So those are all things where you, you can say, um, you know, that's where you're coaching around is point of contact, cutting the field in half, driving them out and away from the net. Mm -hmm. A common mistake my guys always do, they slide and they want to go and just swing their stick and they totally miss and the guy gets a shot up. So what's the so, coaching cue? Like you slide to... So I do a breakdown. So, yep, so it's a slide. So as you're coming through, and, and we'll go through, there's a drill that as you're coming out and you're breaking down. So that's okay. the, the biggest key to, to sliding or anything like that is sliding with, you know, the stick out in front of you, not as not as what you'll see a ton um, is, is a lot of younger kids is, is you'll, they'll put their hands together and start running like this at them and like they're clearly, you know, they're sliding and then they're not in a lacrosse position or even an athletic position. Yeah. So as soon as your hands are together and you're running like this, a lot of times you're standing straight up and that guy can easily, you know, give you a little juke and, you, and you're around. So, you know, as you're sliding, it's here and, and you're sliding out, but you're in an athletic position the whole time. And I think that's really important to work on a slide as you, as you talk about defense and sliding um, to, to work on that. Um, that breakdown stick out in front um, because you, you want your stick to make contact um, and then as you make contact with that stick he has to make a decision right especially with a long pole like I'm, I'm coming out and my sticks out in front of me he's got to make a decision three or four steps before I even get there with my feet so your hands are really secondary to a slide unless unless you're sliding in here where you're gonna you're gonna body somebody up that's all that that's that's I, I never want to see hands together um, running like this unless unless you're in this area and, and you're gonna make a statement you know what I mean and, and a lot of times at that point hey man lower your shoulder and, and we're all good with that um, but you know out here 
It's all about hands and feet, meaning you're arriving with your stick in front to your hands, to, that, to Velcro, but most important is feet. Right. <coughs> Any questions on this? And like I said, I just wanted to, to go through that. If anyone wants to go through a little bit more on that, on that stuff, I'm going to go from behind here um, and kind of talk about those. But the important part with this is those three pillars um, and then being able to you know, do a lot of things around, around those things rather than you know, when you talk about just, well, we're really bad at man-to-man, -man, so we're just going to play zone all the time or, or whatever. But having a base defense you know, with man-to-man -man, I think is, is, is really important. Um, especially at a, at, a, at a younger level, teaching kids, uh, you know, to, to move uh, to move up and, and play in the in the um, as, as they get older in the higher levels of lacrosse. So, just to go through this quickly, and I won't spend as much time because it's again we're talking about the same those same pillars. So we're going to cut the field in half this way, and um, and, and we're going to talk about coming from behind. Coming from behind the net, um, so the, the first one is just a little bit different. Rather than you know cutting the field, cutting the field in half exactly, this is our line in half. But what our job is to do is is theoretically to keep them on this half of the field. So that's almost our first one. But to do that in the best the best way. So instead of having cut the field in half because you really already are, just keep them behind the net. Um, this the step number one here is do not give the offensive player a direct line to goal line extent. Okay? And that's and that's very it's really the same thing as up here, right? Is because if I was cutting the field in half, what am I doing? I'm gonna be here as a defender and I'm not giving them the direct line to, to, to our to to our middle of the field. And that's what I'm saying here again, is I'm not gonna give them a direct line. So if, if this player is standing, you know, over here, I don't want to I want to be standing in that line. So they don't have that direct line to, to go on extended. Does that make sense there? So that's step number one. And, and what this allows is, you know, coaching point is you can be in the middle, you can be right up on your guy, or you can be back here if you really wanted to. Um, but just not allowing them to have that direct line is, is really important because that makes this player move one way or the other. Um, and that gives our, our defense a little bit more time. So, as we come down in, this player comes in, and just for the sake of it, we'll come here. But the, the important part here is our point of contact is the second piece, just like it was up from up top, point of contact. And point of contact is a little bit different from behind, and it's, you know, over the past couple of years, even changed a little bit. It, you know, it used to be goal line extended, you know, have your hands on them at goal line extended, drive them out and away, but now you see these kids scoring at goal line extended. You know, they're coming around and they're freaking, you know, all this nonsense, and it's, it's insane. So. Um, what, what you see a lot is, is a couple yards behind goal line extended. That's where we want to have point of contact. So if we're sliding to the, to the guy behind the net, um, we, want to, we want to be in contact with them um, a couple yards behind goal line extended. Um, or, you know, or we want this defender to be in contact at goal line extended. And then the same thing. We're driving them out and away. And when we talk about driving them out and away, I, th 